And we're getting ready now for the final match on the show court of the day. It's been a busy day, one heck of a day. Uh, this is a day one of five of the New Zealand Secondary Schools Volleyball Championship. We'll go through the teams of uh, these two schools firstly. We have Burnside High School and Burnside are in the green. And we have Mount Monganui College boys and they are in the, the black with the red trim. Let's start with Mount Monganui and the numbers. Number six, Nixon Panapa. Number four, Jeremy Few, he's the uh, captain. Number 12, Carter Hopoi. You'll see him at number 12 there, the tall player. Run right about six foot six, six foot seven. And uh, as we're told, he's only been playing volleyball for two years. Quite likes it. Uh, number one, Max Kelly. Three is Owen Reeves. Number five, Ira Tala. Number nine, Junior Silao. Seven, well, that's Kingston Harris. And number two is Awatia Tamaki. And as we look at this first point, just wait for this. Oh, that's somehow brought back into the uh, into the court. For the power there. This is one heck of a good rally. And still going. Warren Smith, I'll bring you into this, and we'll go through the Burnside team in a minute. And what do you think about that? There's a first. Yeah, uh, that's boom. that's a fantastic first rally. Both of these teams obviously here to play. Last game of the day. Might as well use all of your energy now, which is great. Uh, good rivalry too between these two schools. Burnside High School out of Christchurch, been one of the more dominant schools uh, in that region for a while now. And uh, obviously with Mount Monganui College as an up and coming school in the Bay of Plenty over the last couple of years has produced a, a number of national team players of, of really good, good quality. So right. yeah, we're looking forward to this match actually. This is yeah. going to be quite the, quite the doozy I would imagine. What about number 12 here? And uh, Hopoi? And uh, Carter Hopoi, as Bjorn Kerekere said to me, he's only really just started playing, and he's about six foot six last year. He was six foot six, and he's probably even taller now. That's right. Yeah, there's nothing. Lo there's nothing wrong with a bit of length. Yeah. Um, he's a one of these kids who, obviously, when they come into the sport at, at the age that he is now, um, if he decides he wants to take it somewhere, he certainly can. Uh, height is such a, a, a huge advantage, particularly if he wants to go and play overseas. Um, but uh, head and shoulders above the height above everybody else. Yeah, it's yes. six, 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 seven. What's that about? One nine five or yeah, about, about one ninety eight. Yeah. Nearly two meters tall. Yeah. So you yeah, put the man bun on top of that, and he's probably, yeah. probably yeah. a good six foot eight. Exactly. And um, look on the other side on, on the Burnside uh, team. There's a young fellow there named Thomas Vesti. He's um, the current under twenties national team setter, and uh, looking at this stage in 2024 to head away to the Asian Championships with the national team. He's a real standout player for Burnside, has been for a couple of years now as well. He will in fact uh, go into the senior men's team at the Shirley Volleyball Club this year and play right. for, for them in Let's their A squad. Have a look at all the uh, team numbers, there's certainly some big numbers uh, on the chest there. Burnside High School, we've got number 72 is James Barker McMillan, 62 Ollie Barker McMillan, 77 we've got listed uh, Hugo Fong, and uh, 71 Ryan Huang. 55 is Esther Kolka, uh, Koha. 92, Azriel Maliotta, Maliotoa. And 69, Finn Matheson. 88, Joshua Siwaba, Siwaba, I think it is. And Thomas Vesti, 79. And Matai Huge, Hughes Apulu. And uh, the team officials, the coaches, Toby Gardner. And the manager, Claire Barker. Toby Gardner as coach, uh, you know much about him? Yeah, Toby's uh, a young player who's uh, who's now quite involved, obviously, with the Burnside team, and uh, he's as a as a player played at one division two this year in, in his own club uh, national championships, which was great. So he's one of these guys that we're really looking to uh, bring through the through the coaching ranks, and these are perfect experiences for him. Okay, Kingston Harris about to serve now for the mount. But I have to give a special uh, shout out to Brendan Ray Horlock, who is the coach for the Mount Monganu team. One of the real gentlemen of our game. Been around for many years, supported, um, encouraged, mentored an incredible amount of players uh, in, his, in his tenure. Mount Monganui College uh, wouldn't be the same without uh, his tutelage his, and his support. An absolute gentleman of the game. You see him there on the sideline to uh, everybody's right. Oh, 
Well, it's only early stages, but both teams seem very well drilled. Very, very well drilled, yes. Uh, in terms of their balance, looking really good, actually, across um, their ability to attack and defend. So, yes, if these rallies, these last couple of rallies are anything to go by, gosh, we could be, be here tiring. for a while, eh? Oh, don't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be uh, very tiring as well for all the players. And uh, let's take a look now at who's uh, serving down there. 71, the big numbers. It's right wrong. Use that one. Go setting it up. Some power there. Yeah. That was a, a heck of a shot there from uh, Thomas Festi. Plenty of power in it. And, however, it comes back, and we have this serve. Uh, Jeremy Fu, who is the captain for Mount Mahanoo. That block go, it went well. Beautiful block here. Yeah. And again, we've seen this whole feeling of out of teams at this early stage, just not quite sure. They, don't, they haven't seen each other before, even though they'll know each other by name in terms of schools. Uh, every year they turn up and it's a bit of a lottery as to the, uh, the quality of the teams that you're facing. But um, traditionally, two strong schools. Oh, just too far. So we know that Rangitoto are the champions in both girls and boys. Mm -hmm. Who would be their main rivals? I mean, there's, uh, say, Hamilton or Hillcrest coming through in the boys, or is there a school that we should be watching out for in the boys, aside I, from Rangitoto? I think, um, inevitably, we're, actually, today is probably not the day to answer that question. Okay. Um, over, the next, over the next day, tomorrow being Tuesday, we, we will start to see things crystallise. Right. And um, I wouldn't say that um, there are any early runners that I've seen in terms of teams, including Rangitoto. Rangitoto are a good team. I mean, Rangitoto, you've got to rate up there because yeah. they're defending champs. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, they're the defending Australian champions. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so there's a, obviously a massive legacy there to, uh, to hold together for the team. And, and good coaches as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm really interested to see how this goes this year. I would, I would say that the level has flattened out, um, particularly Kaya, in the Kaya boys. Kaya Stevenson was uh, there for the girl. Uh, Kiana. Kiana. <laughs> but, uh, the, the two of them there, they had a couple of Ks there uh, in the schools last year. That's right. And the annual significant player to have in your team. Oh. Oh. And the whistle's gone. Oh. And the water. Yeah, number 12 boy, unfortunately the way he set that cross the net, he, he actually twisted and so he was what known as a throw. Um, yeah, unfortunately the big fellas tend to do that a little bit more than the little fellas. Well, last year, the surprise to me, and I'm sure to a few people, was in the boys, Waimea going through to the uh, final. Yes, yes. And again, this is this is um, schoolboy volleyball. You've got these teams that all of a sudden get on a roll. They're not necessarily the favourites. Yeah. Um, it's, especially when you're away from these events, you've always got some big-name schools, Western Heights, um, Tarana Boys, and so on, Mount Monganui College, etc., etc., and... Uh, and all of a sudden, the team pops out of the woodwork, yeah. and you just go, whoa, whoa, hang on a second. Hang on a how second. How did Waimea come out of yeah, that? Yeah, how did they come out of that? And yet, of course, Waimea, traditionally one of the very, very strong schools. Um, but it's a generational thing. All of a sudden, one group just seems to pop out. And uh, so that's why I'm, I'm a little bit interested. And just down here to our left, unfortunately for our viewers, they won't be able to see it, but there's a game with Manurewa College playing okay. and I think that there's we've got to keep a bit of an eye on on them as well they also have an extremely tall player who is um, a year 11 but boy can he hit the ball huh? so he's yeah. one of these kids who you just look at and go well there's some something special going on there um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how Madurewa uh, pull through this uh, event over the, over the course of the week oh. <laughs> we saw him launch up there and he is in that height. Get up. It's great to see these young, these young athletes, women and men. Um, the National Championships itself is in a massive uh, confidence booster. They come here and they see their role models. They see others doing you yeah. know, amazing things. And then it kind of flicks the switch in the brain to say, well, I can do that too. Um, and so... Well, what do you think? Are you safe? Oh, yeah, that was good. Yep, no problem. Um, Yes, I think that's that's one of the things I like. And so the quality of the tournament is going to improve. Um, 
after these first couple of days things do, do uh, get better as we go along Going, can they get it over? Oh, just no, not quite. I've always wondered about with volleyball indoor going to 25 mm -hmm. because so much pressure has come on so many sports, and I've been involved in a huge number of them. Squash was one of them where it took an age to score a point. Switching back, you had to serve, and then eventually they got the ball and said, No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's serving. The point goes. Same with badminton, was similar. Yes. Uh, tennis, you've got your structure, and that's that's okay. Uh, you know, you can still win a game with someone else serving. Mm -hmm. But with volleyball going to 25, there so must be some pressure to bring it down to 21 as well. There could well be, but the thing is that in, in, it was probably after. It was actually I tell the story if I can. Uh, yeah. After the 1988 Olympics, uh, the the a bronze medal match Argentina against somebody yeah. took three hours and five minutes and the American broadcaster said oh, okay, we, we, we can't do that and so it was, wasn't that long after that that then they started changing the rules from a single rally point as we would know it yeah. so you have to win the point on your serve yes. to the 25 point system okay. which is what we've got which is what we've got now yeah. yes and of course it's like everything isn't it it's like test cricket takes a too, far too long one day is now starting to take too long t20s is yeah, the way exactly. we go so that, that's why i'm looking at volleyball yeah. saying would it matter much to bring it down to 21. uh no it wouldn't no in fact um, and i'm just thinking about the broadcasters yeah. because as you said yep. having worked for those broadcasters around the world it's like come on hurry up yep. <laughs> that's enough of that we're already going to five <laughs> and, and that's the sort of thing that uh, keeps the sport going sometimes just keep it everybody wants shorter and sharper Yes. And more tension, yeah. quicker. And I think that volleyball is, they, they obviously addressed it back in the day, um, and they've addressed it well with beach volleyball. But the next the next step is to see what they do with the indoor. And unfortunately, I think indoor volleyball, uh, what I'm seeing particularly on the world tour, um, in our, what's known as our, our, our nations, nations League, is that the actual volleyball is part of an event now. So it's yeah. not just the sport. And I think this is, again, um, we see a lot in basketball. You, you go to watch the basketball, but then you also go to watch the, the fun stuff in between. Oh, yeah. And so it doesn't matter, necessarily matter that it takes a little bit longer. The main thing is, is that you get more of an experience than just the sport itself. Well, I can put that into something, you know, context for the Australian Open Tennis. We've got it 25 times. You go along, there's the concert. It's like Billy Idol was singing. I think, oh, that's Billy Idol. Oh, he's old. And you go in there, then there's all these things for the kids. Mm who you can almost go and watch the match and leave the kids if you have them. Or you go to this, then there's a, a top restaurant, yes. Rockpool restaurant. Like, well, what about the tennis? Oh, no, it's over there. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the yes. tennis is almost forgotten yes. in some ways. And uh, in our sport, what's one of the one of the really nice, most modern iterations is these, um, the, although we've got a lovely floor here, this is now what we call a very old generation floor. Yeah. The new ones are actually video screens. Yes. And so they are entertainment all on their own yes. well it's interesting here that you've got the four courts in front of us and uh all of them actually do have cameras on them and then the back end of us is almost like old school gym yes lower ceiling there's the wood it's so many lines 20, on the 20,000 lines on the court oh, i was right. confused as to which line we're looking at that's right so so are the kids by the way. yeah yeah <laughs> of course and in the meantime we've got a bit of a tight one here no side really been able to take the initiative just yet although this is certainly helping going 17 uh, 13 Otomotai and call over for a time no not a timeout just a bit of a word from the coach that's it just to give him a little bit of extra direction and this is where you'll see now you see Toby uh, on the other side with the yellow cap he's doing exactly the same thing yeah. they're now playing chess um, they realize that things are getting a little bit tight so uh, they're just adjusting their teams to do the things that they need in and around points um, all picked up Let's look for it Nice play. Who's going to take it? So the good thing is for Otomoto, it doesn't have to be number 12 all the time. There's a couple of other players who can come up. Oh, so for Mount Monganui, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry Mount Monganui, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Getting my fine. Tauranga schools there. But yeah, they, they do have other options. Yeah, and, and, and this, uh, guaranteed that's exactly what the coach will be doing. He will be out now asking those different players to, uh, uh, to sort of contribute more. And the thing is, you, you want to give the big fella his confidence, so let him have a few swings. 
Um, and at some stage along the way, he will just he, it'll it'll peter out because yeah. obviously we, we all do that. Um, and so uh, BR is uh, Brendan Ray, our, the coach there. He'll just adjust those hitters. He'll be talking to his his setters, making sure that they um, they understand that they can't overload people. So he'll go with uh, Huang, Ryan Huang from Burnside with the serve. Let's see the setup. Uh, pretty strong in the end. Who was yes. that with the uh, yeah. shot? Thomas Vesti on the outside yeah. there. So he's, like I said, he's their go-to guy. Um, yeah. yeah, he really is one of the sort of standout athletes, um, particularly for Burnside over the last few years. And now that he's actually become, so to speak, big and strong, yeah, he's, um, he's actually grown into his yeah, body. Yeah, into his body. He's a he's a real weapon now. Nicely picked up at the back, and nope, we've gone outside the uh, aerials. Yes, at 19.15, Matt Monganui are nicely ahead at the stage. I think that um, my... Yeah, the time out. That's time what out. you'd expect, Yeah, that's exactly, exactly what you'd expect. And the thing is that the teams like Mount Monganui College, they come out of systems of, of competition where they're quite happy just to have that three, four-point lead and they can carry it through to the end. They don't tend to, to, to drop away too heavily. So what's uh, Brendan Ray Horlock going to say? to Mount Wakanui here. So yeah, he'll be just saying, hey guys, just keep doing what you're doing. You're on the right track. Don't, don't have to do anything special. Um, at the end of the day, what if my observation is that, is that the Burnside team, once they get into the longer rallies, they, they do okay, but they don't have the physical presence to really do a lot of damage. So the Mount Wakanui guys can stay calm on the court. Uh, they know that they'll be able to pick up the ball. They're good defenders, and that's how I'd be talking to that group at the moment, to say, yep, um, keep calm and carry on. With Toby, he, uh, he'll be talking a lot more about, hey, we need to pick up a little bit here. We need some more urgency. Um, we need, the, And most importantly, a little bit more ball control around getting the ball to the setter. It's a little bit sloppy over there, which is causing their attack some, some problems that it doesn't need to have. Right, Jeremy through with the uh, serve there. For the minute. And yeah, good, good response from uh, Burnside. Good, good attacking response. And the good thing is, is uh, you know, Toby is a younger coach. He's going to be learning from this. He's, he's up against a real uh, wily operator um, who's been here and done that um, so many times before with success. That, um, Just about knocks him off his feet. Oh, oh, careful. There we go. There's no point hurting yourself for that sort of shot. The so. lads love the workload, though. That's good. Yeah. Hard luck. 20 points to 16. Uh, Mount yeah. Maunui comfortably ahead at this stage. And again, if... Um, if this was an easy game, Coach uh, Coach Hallock, he'd be sitting down by now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this is not an easy game. He's got to respect his opponent and, and give them his due and keep making sure he's making the adjustments. So let's have a look at the formation there of uh, Mount Montanui. Mm -hmm. uh, regular formation. Yep. They, what they're doing there is they're shielding the server so that it's very hard for the passers to be able to contact what's happening with the ball. That's great. The only unfortunate thing about that, using that strategy, is yes, it might shield the ball, but then everybody knows where the ball is going. So <laughs> yes. the passers are always going to be able to be a little bit more oriented towards what's actually happening. We don't see that particular strategy much in the top end of the international game as much anymore because it, it really doesn't have much effect. Um, at this level, sure, you can you can definitely have some effect, but not, not to the same extent as you get. James Barker, McMillan with the serve there for Burnside. He was calling for a let, but uh, the yeah, shot had already sure been played. Sure, the shot had already been played. And actually on that point, with 17 points to Burnside and 20 points to, oh, 18 to 20. So Burnside are kind of hanging in there, which is good. And uh, if Thomas Vesti gets round to the service spot, um, in time to go and uh, towards the end of the match, he can That's he can actually swing a match on his own. Now you see how way across the court they had to put that for uh, Hokoi. It was quite a way out of the court. Yes, but, uh, they knew where it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. He's obviously calling for it, or it's a set move. Number five, Era Tale. Very simple serve. There we go. Back. Very effective. Yeah. And uh, that's a decent point there, a freebie as such. Mount Wanganui going to 22. 
they've got to feel confident about wrapping it up now, albeit only I'd, four ahead. I'd say so. They, they, they've just weathered a little bit of a two-point storm, and, and uh, Burnside had an opportunity there to uh, take a bit of momentum, but they've actually lost it now. Uh, with with uh, Mount Mong Nui, there we go, picking up those extra points. And the communication. Yeah, no break, point breaking there. down when it needed to, uh, needed to be its, at its best. And so they'll go at him again, same guy. Um, yeah. Same pressure point. Coming at him uh, like a rocket. And so at 23-19, it is going to be a bit of a tough road here, but uh, one thing that Thomas Vesti's done, he is, I've seen him change games uh, simply because of his ability to serve. Um, so we'll see whether he's got some good pressure on or not. Okay, so this should be a good set. They knew where he was, he got the call. Uh, nice uh, nice work by the big fellow. They thought yeah. he was going to swing hard. Yeah, they were looking for him almost on the other side, but he came around on the right-hand side and gets to serve it out. Yes, yeah, set point to Mount Monganui. It's been a tidy set by them. Uh, nice and controlled. Keeps it in. Uh, it's a great swing. It's unfortunate at this level, those little mistakes that Burnside are making are really costly. Um, so they've done well to side out there, but it's still not particularly tidy. Mount Monganui do not look stressed in what's happening on the court. Um, and so Burnside, have, I think, it's have to say Burnside have got the work to do, uh, got the work ahead of them. And I'll take another time out to try and... Yeah. So Fair Brendan Ray just uh, trying to upset the rhythm of the server. And what about uh, if you are Burnside's coach, uh, Toby? Gardner there, what's he going to be saying? I think at this stage it's just going to be, we're doing the right things, we're actually in this, but we've just got to tidy up on the little pieces around the edges. Um, the little bits of fine control. As we saw there, um, the Mount Monganui just targeted the one passer in that last rotation and got two easy points. And the thing you'd be trying to do is, is just trying to arrest that a little bit earlier. Otherwise, the yeah, Burnside side haven't played a bad set. Um, Mount Monganui have just been a little, little bit better. And that was unfortunately a strong serve, but out by Burnside, which leaves Mount Monganui one set to nil up, 25-20. Well, there we go, 25-20, to 20, the first set. And it goes to Mount Monganui over Burnside. Uh, so we will come back in just a moment with the second set. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. Going once, going twice. No more offers. It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved in this. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on. And so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. Forest should never have been taken off this steep hill country that's eroding and it makes absolutes to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We
Looking at a managed transition process where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. And back on for the second set because the first, well, that was won by Mount Muganui. 25 to 20 over Burnside and uh, Warren Smith, it, it kind of showed that Mount Mongano with just that little bit, albeit five points, just a little bit more composed at times. That's it. That's it. Just a little bit more competitively mature I would, is, is yeah. the way I'd put it. And uh, they were just able to get a little bit of that lead, wait for the mistakes from their opponent and then just cruise their way towards the end. So people are just taking their time and uh, where's the ball? Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Looking around for it. No one seemed to have it there. And uh, it is uh, Fru who's going to be serving first. So the big challenge for, for Burnside in this set is that um, Mount Monganui are just going to keep on doing what they're doing. There's Nothing's going to change in what, they, uh, what they're attempting. And so it's up to Burnside to, to be proactive and take go. the game away from them. And uh, you can see him out wide. Out very, very wide. Some unfortunately from the burn side has touched the net and uh, therefore Mount Monganui has started away. This is the thing about especially the Bay teams and teams in Auckland in particular, they're, they're a little bit more metronomic in the way they play compared to um, uh, teams around the country that don't have the strong competitions uh, in which to sort of do their work. Oh, that nice little block. Uh, beautiful block, yeah. Beautiful block. And unfortunately, Burnside, you know, they lost their first game today. Um, well, that's, that's going to be tough for them now. That, that's tough, yeah, yeah. So they're going to be pushing to actually stay up. Yes, correct. In yeah. Division 1. Yep. You know, if they if they drop this. If they drop this game, they're done, I'd say. I'd say they'll be heading into Division 2. Oh, he's managed to bring it back in. There we go again. Great piece of defence. Uh, the uh, libero for Burnside. Tries it again, but oh, it doesn't quite work that time. That's good. That's good. I like the I like the setters. Um, the setter for um, Mount Monganui is also in the under 20 squad. Um, him and Thomas Vesti, number 79 from Burnside, are competing for the for the starting setting okay. spot for the national squad. So this is in itself is a is a nice little battle. I'm absolutely sure that their national coach will be sitting here watching this with glee. <laughs> It just so happens that he's, a, he's the former Burnside coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look now with number 65 and 65 is a Matai Huge Apulu. And it drops his left shoulder a little bit and uh, it's going to pull down the serve. And it's unfortunately, it's, it is those, just those little things um, that will make the difference in the end. And, Mount Monganui, again, they don't miss many serves. They don't necessarily put a whole lot of pressure on to, uh, and then go to miss serves. Max Kelly with a bit of a slow serve, that one. Mm -hmm. Deceptively yeah. slow. And again, right over that big group of players, which makes it incredibly hard for the passers to read that. Well, he's, he's quite short compared mm -hmm. to some of the others there. Let's see, is he going to go straight or go across the court a bit? Yeah, pretty straight. That's a nice answer from the uh, Burnside boys, that's good. There is a very simple strategy to, to solve that problem in terms of the passing. When, when they're serving right over top of a big group of guys, you stand just to the outside so you can see the server, and then you step in once the ball comes. But um, we haven't seen anybody really take that on at this stage. It's, it's a little bit technically difficult to well, do. That's better, but well picked up. Too big. What's he looking for? A touch? I don't think he got a touch. No, he didn't get a touch, but he liked it. He, he was obviously uh, optimistic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> it's the just, right answer. You overhead it. Yeah. And slowly but surely the pressure mounts again. Uh, Matt monganui has gone out to a 5-3 to three lead this set. Um, certainly know that Burnside have got some work to do here to, uh, to get themselves back in the game, but obviously... Oh. Passing has been a problem, but there we have a... Oh, where's the call? Who was calling that? It should have been mine. Yep. So, so the guy in the very red shirt, he's the libero. He's a specialist defence player. That's exactly his ball. Um, he should be ranging around the whole court, dealing with all of the little rubbishy stuff that he can pick up. 
leaving the hitters to go out and do their work. So if you wanted to call it, you could say they're the rubbish players. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah perhaps yeah. not. Yeah, no, they, we call them the garbage men. They go yeah. around and pick up the rubbish. That's yeah. true, yeah. That is true. Yeah, so for, for anybody who hasn't really seen too much of uh, volleyball, you will quite often, not all the time, uh, see someone in a different, a different uh, jersey or a different uniform, and that's pretty much their job. They also do the dishes and, and carry the balls and, and cook the food and, and wash the clothes. That's their job. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not quite yeah, true. I don't think that would go down too well. No, that no, definitely wouldn't go down too well at all. Okay, let's look for the set. It's coming up. Yeah, you're going to love that, don't you? As, as a coach, you're just going to like the way yeah. that was executed. Yeah. You smile. You smile when that stuff happens. Yeah. It was uh, simple. It's the server as well, moved up, basically said, mine. Leave it alone, I'm going to take it. He's got that shield in front of him. Okay, that's a couple of good points, a couple of easy points. That's a couple of easy points, and this is the thing, isn't it? Like I said, it's just that constant metronomic pressure. Mount Monganu really aren't doing anything special other than serving the ball over and letting the, letting the uh, Burnside guys so to speak, make the errors. And uh, you know, in some cases, that's all you need to do. Go, the block. Well, it's good to get up for that block. It didn't quite come off, though, in the end, but it was good to get there. Yeah, if one thing I know about Burnside over the years of competing against them as well, they're a scrappy team. They don't give up very easily. And uh, <laughs> so hopefully what we'll do is we'll just see a good sort of continuation of their hard work, if nothing else. Here they go. There we go. Uh, they did just that. Yep. And at seven points to nine, uh, seven points to eight, it's uh, just hanging in there. And uh, we haven't seen uh, the Mount Monganui guys, so to speak, crack yet. Um, and if they lose a little bit of concentration, then we may see Burnside sort of put some real pressure on. There we go. Yeah. Nice little run of points. Sure, what happened between Mandurewa and their opponents, but everybody seems happy actually on that court. Yeah. So who knows what happened? Everyone's happy. Oh, that was the uh, Seventh Day Adventist uh, team. Uh, that is their ASD. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Auckland Seventh Day Adventist, or maybe they're just yeah, okay. Moving on for the next match. It's yeah. a bit hard to tell. Yes, they're just preparing yeah, yeah, for the next. Yeah, they're just coming on yeah. for the next match. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, isn't this great? I mean, this is part of the camaraderie of it, is knowing you, knowing the people that you play with and against all year, and you turn up at nationals and you're all on the, so to speak, on the same on the same team a little bit. And uh, the call going to the Mount team there, a bit of a, almost a bit of jousting up near the net. And this is one of those dangerous times a little bit for, for Ben, so they've got themselves back in here and they certainly can't rest. And again, Mount Monganui are just going to keep on doing their thing. Just missed it. Didn't quite set himself right. Didn't, yeah. It was a bit of a, I'll just flick it up. And also, when you put your head down in the block, you don't get to be able to look up where the ball's going. So, unfortunately, that was more his mistake. Just got to keep his head up and eye on the ball throughout the whole action. So this is Nixon Panapa just drops in. Nice serve. I think he'll be a little bit relieved at that as well. Mm. Yes, and as I said, you know, they had a two-point lead and now they've got a four-point lead. All of a sudden, they're back out to the, uh, a nice, comfortable margin. A good decision by their coach, Toby Gardner, to take a break now. Um, there's no need to let this kind of get too far away from them. As we take that little break as we said Just a reminder that this is uh, from New Zealand secondary schools at championships here in the Palmerston North at the Palmy venues and uh, thank you very much to Caltex Bailey's New Zealand Cup and Farmer also Apollo Projects and, Maori. and also to a volleyball manual two sport manual two 
and uh, Menable 2 or Palmerston North Council. We had the Mayor here last night. Very enthusiastic. I guess you've got about, we think, Warren, how many students would be here? If we've got 200 teams, you've got about nine people per team. So we're, yeah, usually this is about between 17 and 1800 kids. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that long ago that we were the, um, the largest uh, secondary school sport in the Southern Hemisphere. We now know that uh, Marty Cup has, yeah, has overtaken that um, in the grand scheme of things, but. Um, well, we'll say arguably the largest. How's well, that? I think we are the largest in terms of awesomeness. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's the 54th tournament as well. 54th tournament. we go going for a little while now. Yes, indeed. And um, just uh, uh, probably going back a little way, my first, my first national championship that I played was in 1981. So I... I've no idea how long ago that was. Yeah, that's a little way, but uh, more than more than the odd grey here. Yeah. But and, and it, even back then, it was just the most exciting thing to attend. Yeah. It was the absolute highlight on the calendar. Here we go, get set. Nice blocking, and this time. Oh. So we had one of the Burnside players. Unfortunately, touching the net. That's yeah. what I wasn't quite sure that he had. Um, and of course, here we are, 14 points to eight. Um, Mount Monganui now have taken quite the lead, which means that unfortunately the Burnside's guys, their uh, I suppose their uh, concentration has just dropped a little bit. And um, whilst that concentration drops happening, Mount Monganui have just carried on doing their thing. Picked it up nicely. Here we go again. Oh, yeah, it was a good fun. idea from the setter, but I think he was trying to play like he was meant to be an adult, and that didn't quite work <laughs> out the way he thought it might. Good in theory. He's got the serve now. Number 72, James Barker. You're in. Hello. That's the one. That's what he's been looking for. That's it, yeah. They've got a little bit of free air now, so they can start playing a few combination uh, you know, a few combination balls. Um, that just shows that Mount Monganui are, so to speak, full of confidence and are comfortable to take a few risks. Whereas Burnside really are struggling with just the simple things, of, of, particularly around their concentration at the moment. But, uh, like I said, they're a scrappy team. They don't give up easily. So I'm expecting that good things will continue to happen. Just like that. Yeah. Beautiful swing. One of the courts, one of the top four courts has been completed for the day. Everybody's on their last match. Court one is probably the slowest one. And in the meantime, we get ready here for Burnside serving. Ryan Huang. And whose was that? Yep. That's uh, Burnside, Thomas Fessy making a smart move there, just pushing into the block instead of trying to hit through it once he realised he couldn't really have a good swing at the ball. Well, we may have a slightly different score. We've got, oh yes, 15-11 rather than 16-10. And it straight into the net, so maybe a couple points. Yeah, it's just a couple of wayward points now by Mount Monganui. And um, I would suspect that if they lose another one, Brendan Ray will... Probably call a quick timeout. He hasn't used the timeout yet, so he's got two during the set. Um, and he'll probably just uh, also want to get them back a little bit on track, give them a breather. Cool. Yeah, it's a nice hit. That one. Nice hit by, uh, by Thomas Vesti. There we have it. And uh, timeout being called. Yeah. As you predicted. As, <laughs> as per prediction, yes. Yeah, th these are very easy games to um, administer in some ways. You can see through the, the sort of psychological flow of a point and, and rallies how things are unfolding. It's, it's quite easy to see in that respect. And yep, Burnside are on the climb a little bit. They've got themselves from a six point deficit back to a two point deficit, which means they're on the right track. Burnside, uh, sorry, Mount Monganui just need to uh, calm the farm a little bit, get back to what they were doing well. Uh, find that rhythm again and Burnside know that they have to be a little bit desperate and a little bit more aggressive 
and uh, they've just started doing that much to the you know to a, a positive effect so can Burnside now start to take advantage of this enough to put pressure on Mount Monganui to make mistakes all right, Warren. Good Here's question, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's a question for you. Greatest New Zealand player, players. Greatest. Seniors. Greatest New Zealand players. Yeah, who's, who's been the greatest couple of players for New Zealand? Do you know? Oh, that's a great question. If I think across the generations yeah. that I remember, yep. so from the from the probably the 19, early 1990s onwards, right. I would say our premier volleyball player, um, would be a, a young fellow named Ben O'Day. Yep. Um, he you know ben. he yep. was able to play both indoor and beach at an extremely high level. Um, it's not often that you get the combination of both. Uh, well, the O'Day family, as a general rule, yep. were pretty freakish. That's right. Yep. Um, but Ben, like I said, Ben crossed over both indoor and beach, and so for me, that's a yeah, that's a big tick. There have been some um, you know some exceptional indoor players. Over that time, one player that uh, it was certainly not a household name is a young man named Nick Maber. He played professionally in Germany, um, and uh, in one of the series against Australia, basically had Australia almost single-handedly on the ropes. So he was that good. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of these names sort of they they go back, go to history because um, you know it's only people who are relevant at the time. Um, but certainly. Um, on the server and it keeps Burnside in it. It's to one point actually. Yeah, that back down to one point, 15 points to 16. So yeah, it's a, it's a tough question really. Um, we've had a lot of very talented, very good players uh, come through over the years. Just tips the net, here we go. Let's look up the mess. Fortunate. And uh, up to two. two but thankfully for Burnside, you know, that's the first real sort of probably avoidable error that's been for the last four or five points. So the point, the, the idea now is they've just got to stick to it, keep being aggressive, and maybe trying to put Mount Monganui into pressure. This is where they got themselves into trouble last time with their passing. This time they've, oh, oh. they've done that well, but then the rest of it's a little bit unfolded. Unfortunately, um, yeah, this is where Burnside are just, uh, all of a sudden they realise they've got, they've, they're back in it, and unfortunately the mindset's changed. We're discussing with Paul Bjorn, the vital points like in beach 18 all it's a very vital point yep what about with indoor would you call it 20 or maybe is there a particular stage that you think is the most vital there's yes there's there's definitely some really important stages and this middle stage now i think is important for the team who can gather the lead if you can get a three or four point buffer inevitably once you get over 22 um if you're 22 all from that point on every point's important yeah um but you know what I'm saying about oh, uh, yeah. Beach, where 18 all, whoever wins that next point, yes, is, that, uh, that's yep. the big point. Yeah. And that's the same with tw at 22 with Indoor. Yeah. Um, most teams from that point on, they go go into a very, very simple uh, dig, set, hit type of game <clears throat> with a lot of power and a lot of aggression. And uh, it's usually who, who can who can get 23, 22 first, and then, and then you just ride, out, ride it out from there. Right, so a little bit of a push away from the body. Isn't the best and fortunate for Mount Monganui. Oh, yeah. And you can see Brendan Ray is talking with his libero. He's clearly worked out something. The libero pointed at his coach saying, yes, as that point was won. Um, and all of a sudden, Mount Monganui out to a four-point lead. This is, again, that sort of point now where they've got enough of a lead to uh, put a little bit more pressure on, which is what exactly what they've done. Here we go. Wait for it. And there we have it. Loving it. Oh, you should be happy with that. Yeah. It looked good, sounded good. It was set up well. And you can take that risk. You can swing we can swing that hard when you've got a four point advantage. If it's twenty-two all, you might think twice. Yeah. Um, yeah you'd probably be a bit safer. Yeah, a little shot. bit safer in what tentative. you're doing. Probably a little bit more tentative. And pushes that one a bit long. But it was a good, good aggressive serve from Mount Monganui, and they knew they had to serve that way if they want to keep racking up those points. So now, of course, we've got uh, Thomas Vesti on serve. So um, before I, I gave him, I gave him great props about his serving ability, and at 17:21, now's the time, Thomas. Oh, 
You can see the work. set plan. He, he yep. was ready over there waiting. Yep. Everything was yep. everything was dedicated to that yep. situation. Absolutely. Yep. And now he gets to served as a uh, boy. And at 22:17, again, I think that Mount Monganui are just going to just going to basically eke their way through this. They're not going to have to do a lot to change things. It'll just be what we call a side out game from here on in. Hugo Fang with the serve. Oh, well played, keeps it going. And. Ooh, that was pretty close. Yeah. But, uh, yep, they had a swing at it. How so. Would someone like Hopoi, how would he go in the adult world? If he um, playing? At, the, at this stage, yeah. he, he would get massacred. Right. Um, it is good for what he's doing in, in the simplistic type of format here, but unfortunately, once you once you get into the um, into the high level of the men's game, just the sort of the variation in thinking, the way that they are thinking about how points are constructed, um, very quickly they'd work out what he's what he's good yeah. at, and then it, it would like they'd sort sport. of pick on him, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, pick that, on him in the way of knowing his game and knowing yeah. what to do. Yeah. Yep. Now that came off uh, Burnside, so it's a point there yep. to the mount. 23-20. And 20. Indeed. Yeah, so he, I mean, the thing is, you've got to put him into those situations with the men's where he would have to, sort of, so to speak, you but throw him in the water. But he's potentially got game. Yep, absolutely. Yep, absolutely no doubt. And uh, just like every athlete, the more rounded you become, the more problematic you are. And <laughs> so um, at this stage, he's, um, he's just hitting the ball hard. And um, as he gets older and finds that, that you need more variation in your attacking ability, he will learn those skills. And um, and then when you're six foot six or six foot seven, it becomes highly problematic. <laughs> <laughs> and 21-23, Burnside now do have a chance to get themselves back in this if they can win this next point. And that was well done because they switched yep. it up. Yep, Everyone was thinking, is it going to be a boy coming up yep. instead? No, we had number one coming through, Max Kelly. And also they were centering very much on their thoughts on the outside hitter, number four, because they were thinking he's going to be the guy that they want to be able to kill the ball. Uh, but good setting by the uh, Mount Monganui uh, setter, just changing that tactic altogether. Well, to bring in Max Kelly sort of out of nowhere, mm -hmm. who hasn't been their big pinch hitter. That's it. Just bring him in, Yep. set him up. So I think that was uh, well done. directions it looks as though Burnside well they're all ready to go back on straight away almost but one of their players does have a bit of a injured arm that's uh, yeah it, it's so quite it's, a, it's quite a good injury too by the look of it yeah James uh, Barker McMillan by the looks of it yeah, I'm not sure what happened there but um, yeah that's a goodie so. anyway it's a set point for Mount Monganui nice easy serve in <laughs> a good save by Thomas Vesti on the set and uh, yeah unfortunately nobody knew what was going on so <laughs> Burnside won the point right 22-24 worked out in the end it worked out in the end so the, here's the Hail Mary um, Hugo Fang. he's got to do something a little bit special with this serve he certainly can't be conservative about it because if he is then um, trouble is going to arise very quickly uh, a nice flat serve on the libero that's good Okay, so they've got themselves in a good spot here. Vesti's the guy, and swings a nice hard hit across court. Beautiful. 23-24, Mount Monganui now. Um, still got one side out to go before they start to get under pressure. And Brendan Ray has called a timeout. Oh, yes. yep, there you yep. go. Yeah, and that timeout's all about getting that server, giving him 30 seconds to think about his, you know, think about what happens next. BR will set up a nice little uh, little template of a of an attacking plan. The boys will carry that out as they do. But the Burnside guys, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to put the pressure on. And um, there's no better time to to step up into that space. You've just got to get got to give it a crack. Because any anything less than that, it's not going to be it's not going to work. What about Warren when you're playing so late? I mean, tonight so far hasn't been, but when youngsters, teenagers play really late and then have to come back the next day. 
Yeah. What do you, what do, you do with that as a coach? Um, it's Thankfully, what they've worked out here is that they've got a morning session and an afternoon session. And so if you're in the afternoon session, then you're in the afternoon sessions uh, until the playoffs. So... Here we go, unfortunately. Uh, not a good one. Yeah. And it is a 25-23. The second set goes to Mount. And that, um, I, I can guarantee Brendan Ray is just smiling a little bit there, calling a timeout, giving the young fella a, th a, bit of, a bit of a thought process, which did not go well for him. And we're going to come back in the, the third in just a moment. And coming back on for this, the third set. And can Mount Monganui make it a three-zip and uh, win this one against Burnside? Warren Smith, what do you think? Well, this is always a difficult one yeah, because... I mean, it's, uh, it's a tough question. What are the lotto numbers as well? It is, yeah, there's a little bit because Mount Monganui have now got the problem that they've won two sets. Um, they can afford to have a little bit of a break. Um, it's the worst possible outcome for them if they do because that sometimes gives energy enough to the opposition team. But Burnside, again, they're, they're making the smaller fundamental errors that um, I'm pretty sure a team that uh, of, the, of the quality of the Mount Monganui kids, they probably won't let them off the hook, I wouldn't imagine. Okay, looks as though we're ready to roll. And uh, we are. We are just looking around. Where is that ball? Ah, no, we have got it. They were hiding it. The Judy team was just hiding it. <laughs> Cleaning it, we would yeah, really like to think. exactly. Two years ago, we were disinfecting them. Yeah, pretty it's much. These, yeah. Years we just, these days, we just yes. clean them. And that one pushed too long. What a great way to start the third. The Mount team are very happy and uh, kind of hop away about to serve yeah and I think that um, the one thing I haven't noticed from from the Burnside team I'm not sure that they've got another gear they, yeah. they play well for what they're doing and the way they play oh well on the outside of the aerial the outside and of course already two points to zero down um, Mount Monganui again metronomically just going about their business yeah. and unfortunately like I said Burnside really do need to go up another notch if they're going to um, have a chance here it's definitely not over but there's work to be done oh that's nice that's a great block yeah, good positioning had the timing of the leap perfect and that's when the setter, like for example Mount Monganui, that's the problem. If they get a little bit complacent and they slow things down a little bit, that just gives Burnside. That's two service errors though, the start it for is. Burnside. Yeah. So if they get, the, if they get, um, if they get too complacent, then it, it does become problematic because then the other team who's not quite fast enough can all of a sudden be fast enough and read the game better. Um, so it's up to Mount Monganui to keep the pressure on, um, as they have done up till now. And so, like I said, oh. it's up to Burnside to uh, to take the game to Mount Monganui. Oh, that was a bit of a wild hit there from Joshua. Wild shot. It's nice to hit things hard, but you've also got to have a little bit of aim. Yes, a little. Yes, <laughs> hitting, uh, getting it in the stadium is not good enough. Yeah, that's right. And four points to one, Mount Monganui already sort of climbing ahead. And uh, again, same strategies we saw in the previous two sets, causing exactly the same issues. 
Too big. And unfortunately, again, too big. And very, very quickly, 5-1 uh, down. Um, Burnside find themselves already in a spot of bother. This is Nixon uh, Panapa. Yeah, no, nothing special in that. No, nothing. sort of gap. Ooh. Yep, and also you can see again the Mount Monganui guys are all standing over to that left hand side, hands up, making it incredibly difficult for the passers on the other team to see what's happening. Have we got a timeout? Yes, we that do. one would yep. be called by Burnside. Yeah. Toby's just going, hey boys, we need to refocus here. Yeah. Um, it's not okay to sort of drop your shoulders, drop your heads. You've got to get out there and carry on, carry on the business. Um, it's n it's no terminal damage to a, to a loss, but it is uh, very difficult sometimes to regain that composure and, and confidence if you let yourself fall in a bit of a rut. And so um, I know Brendan Ray down here, he'll be telling his boys, just keep the pressure on, lads. Just keep doing what you're doing. Nothing special. Just wait for Burnside to make the errors. Nixon Papa with the serve again. Going straight. Yep, same guy, same result. Oh. Couldn't quite pull that one up. Okay. Nice angle. Nice shot by uh, Thomas Best. He got himself in behind the ball, stepped back, and then uh, gave it a good crack, which is good. Yep. That's what we want to see. And uh, who's uh, serving now? One of their key servers it is Hugo Craig. And where's he going to put this one? And up. Well done. Oh, but uh, just putting it down on his own side. And nice lead. Five points, five points, six points. Yeah, we're at a five point lead at this stage. And although Burnside has stabilised, that, that, that initial run of points is now costing them. It's going to be very difficult for them to get themselves back in the match. Oh, Kingston Harris. Seven there, and it went out pretty wide. There's no way he could have brought it back on that angle. It would have been, well, fairly difficult. It would have been tough, yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's a great angle. It's a great angle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how in that? Unfortunately, it's got to cross the net for it to win. Yeah, I was thinking, did he get that? Yeah. No, he <laughs> couldn't have got that. He stayed rather cool for if he had. <laughs> yeah. Oh, keeping it up, keeping it up, and too far. Too far. Mm. Okay, so let's just think about, um, I suppose, the end result for each of these teams. Um, Burnside, if they lose this game now, they'll be going back into the second division for the rest of the tournament. Right. Um, they'll have had two losses from their two games today. Um, and for the Mount? For the Mount, this will be their second win of the day. Yeah. Um, and on that, they'll be definitely going into the first division for, and in, into new pools as of tomorrow. One of the lovely things about this uh, system is that everybody comes back into this fresh each year. Um, you get another shot at it and you can make your way back into, you know, into the first division simply by turning up and, and having a good crack at it. Um, well, well, this is uh, something that was mentioned about. Should there be like basketball where you have the playoffs to get into the main nationals? Now, there is a bit of that yes. already. Yep. But then, do you want to have it so it's so exclusive? Yeah, no, you don't. Uh, ex exactly, yeah. The reality so, is there's 198 teams here and there's that's an awful lot of kids in the sandpit. And um, it's... It's the highlight of the sporting calendar yeah. for all volleyball players. And um, there's nothing more exciting, more fun to be involved in than you know, being at the national championships. Yeah. And, so and even if you are Division 5, five? it yeah. goes to Division 5, yeah. Possibly out at Massey at the moment or, or wherever you might be. But even if you're at Division 5 and maybe you finish a little bit earlier, you can still come through and support a school that you like or don't Correct. like or whatever. Or just see the greatest volleyball that you'll see. Yeah. Um, a lot of those Division 5 schools come from places where 
Volleyball's not the most popular sport. Oh, that's a nice one there from uh, Vesti. Was that Vesti? Yes, it was. Yes, it was, yeah. And so from that respect, it's like, wow, this is our game. Um, and I, I love it. So I, you'd, you'd want to keep it as absolute, open as possible? Yep, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, the cream does rise to the top. Yep. The system is, is designed to allow that to occur. You, there's a democratic opportunity towards that, so that's fine. Um, turn up, compete, have your, have, your, have your crack. There's the other factor for it as well. And this is sometimes forgotten. Look at that great shot there from Hopway. He's happy with that. But the social aspect of it. Now, sometimes people think, oh, we don't want them all you know, just partying. It's oh, not about yeah. that. Com yes, it is. Completely. Well, com I mean, no, not about that for the organisers, but it's socially, yes. it's good for people. It's it is actually good. Yep, absolutely it is. And this is the thing is that our sport is something that is it's open. Um, it doesn't matter what ethnicity, ethnicity you are, it doesn't matter how, much, how many dollars you've got in the bank, it doesn't matter if you're a girl or a guy, it's all here. Oh, and, um, he has kept it in. No, he has, yes, he has somehow, from uh, beyond the chairs almost. Oh, and the block, and, and somehow that turns around block. to Burnside. Yep, that was a great, great rally to stay in there. It's a scrappy Burnside that I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so the thing is, if, if, you've got a, if you've got a game where all of those things come together, it's such a great atmosphere. Um, it's such one of the absolute wonderful things about our sport is that, um, unfortunately, this year there is no social. But normally, when you go to the social on the on the last night, um, and you see literally 1,800 teenagers just having an absolute blast, yeah, um, it's it's really is heartwarming. Well, that is part of the maturity. It's it's how you become an adult. Sometimes better than the adult. It's how you understand about other people and yeah. go, hey, well, how often is Burnside or Christ College going to hang out with Mandarua? Correct. It's, 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 yeah. it's not going to happen. It's never happened. And that's where those exclusive events start to become problematic, in my opinion, because they are, everybody then just becomes very insular. Yeah. Um, I have to focus on my team and my program and, yeah. my, and my project in, the, in that yeah. event. Um, and then, actually, here, yes, we all do that, but we do that in a spirit of uh, hanging out, all of the coaches know each other. We're all always having a bit of a chinwag. Kids are in representative teams together. They're always hanging out together. Um, and back in my day, Burnside and Kashmir, the team that I used to coach, and the Burnside kids, they were just the best of mates. Yeah. Um, and this is a, this is great. It's um, it's exactly how you want things to be. And oh, pushes that one too far. So a little the, bit the of a mistake. Big, Coming big, back in, Burnside slightly. Uh, still, uh, what is it, six points away. Uh, the gap, six. So, yes, Burnside definitely got a mountain to climb here. Um, and Matt Monganui again, just metronomically ticking along. Doing it in. It's in. Yep. Yep. Big fella had a nice high ball there. And he now gets to serve as well. Oh, boy. Let's just hope that um, in two years' time we still see him playing volleyball. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the hard thing. That's I mean, the hard thing is, is for a lot of sports, basketball and volleyball, very similar in that they have a huge followings, particularly in schools. Yeah. Uh, what it comes down to there is being able to have a club structure where if he feels that he's not the best player, albeit that he is in this team possibly, that he can still play basketball, mm. uh, volleyball, volleyball. or yep. basketball in the case, and um, that's it. And this is where um, real, um, you know, Komatoa for our sport, and, and Brendan Ray Horlock, he's the guy who will keep working with these kids once they leave school. He's a connector into the community far more than he is just a high school coach. And um, the amount of kids that he's taken through into national programs uh, that have gone on to to do great things in volleyball it's it's incredible really and it's all because it's not over when he's finished with them at school who did that come off did it come off anybody it did touch a block um unfortunately they're calling that it was the block i thought that might have come off the hitter's hand actually um but anyway they um so no, nobody seems to be disagreeing too heavily 18 should be the score line now 18 9 is it should be possibly <laughs> Maybe. A well, decision's been made, and so again, here we have uh, the Mount kids that are in their line on that side. Oh, oh there we it's go. a couple that we've seen now. Uh, Panapa just dropping that. Sometimes when, um, obviously, the Burnside kids disagree with that call before, and then the ball gets served in the net, and they say, well, the ball knows. 
Well, as we slowly but surely head towards the end of our evening, uh, 17 points to 10. And who's going to take it? There we go. It's a few. Somehow they stay in it. Need to be a bit more calling going on. That's a nice block uh, from our Burnside compatriot. 11 points to 17. It's another one they've clawed back. And uh, as you can see, uh, Brendan Ray has just called a bit of a timeout just to say, hey, boys, let's, uh, Good timing. let's get the character of the team back together again. What we don't want is sloppiness. I'm sure that's, that would certainly be the message I'd be giving them. We stay with the system because it works, and uh, you guys have got a job to do. And, uh, the Burnside guys will be just going, yep, let's just keep rolling through. Let's just try and take our points when we can. And Burnside uh, team ready to line up and get back on the court. And here come the uh, Mount team. Straight on. And let's have a look at that Mount team. Keep it with their sort of regulars of uh, Fru and also Hopoi. They're the two main players who are sticking around the whole game. Here we go. Too big. I'll do it. Come off some hands. I'm not sure of the call just yet. Yeah, it's touch on the yeah. touch okay. on the blocks. Got yeah. been called. That's good sportsman behavior. Good sportsman like behaviour. Um, sometimes you just gotta just gotta admit it when it happens. Yeah. Um, Kingston Harris now with the serve. Uh, the regular format, the regular positioning that we're seeing. Yep. Nice and low. We go. <laughs> yep, no one there. And keeping it relatively tight, albeit seven points. They're just hanging in there like as far yeah. as the Mount players will be, will you just go away? <laughs> and the Burnside the Burnside guys really don't have an answer. The, the no. Mount guys are just, like I said, metronomically just rolling through this. Burnside oh. obviously they've got to do more if they want things to go well and it, that forces those, that kind of pressure there where he's just trying to do something a little bit above his uh, pay scale so to speak in terms of his technical skill um, because he has to. Now of course again we're back to that seven point lead for Mount Monganu and this will just slowly but surely work its way into uh, the end of the game I would suggest. They set that one up nicely. Beautiful. That was well done. Yep, beautifully well done. For both teams, there's a bit of a, 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 not an easier day tomorrow, but the first game of the day, uh, Burnside can't make it into the top into the top division now. Mount Monganui are already in the top division, so there's no big playoff um, to try and scratch their way into that second place, uh, which will make the first, ga first game of the day a little bit easier. Second game, they're back into their, into their playoff pools, and that's when things will start to get a little bit, uh, a little bit niggly again. So what would be your way, if we're not going to adjust the scores from 25 to 21 or whatever, mm -hmm. what would be your way of speeding up the game a little bit? Um, there was a, a suggestion made, I quite like this, this was a suggestion was made in the, in the early 2000s where you would go to actually having a, basically like, a, a little bit like squash, having mini games and then having a, a, a break in the middle and then playing another mini game with a golden set at the end. And that was that looked quite good in terms of the structure of it. If we were right. thinking about the entertainment package, um, if we were thinking about trying to uh, just speed up the game, it's simple. You make these best of three sets, not best of five, um, and that way you only have to win two sets, not three. What about? Here's one of the things that happens in tennis. It's it's like start the game. Warm ups should be done almost beforehand, oh, start yes. the game at the game time. Yep, yep. In terms, of the, in terms of TV coverage, I know that that already certainly happens on the, on the Nations League for the volleyball. Um, but overall, I think, yeah. Could you make the change of ends a little bit shorter? Would yeah, it matter? Yeah, I think you could actually, you could do. Uh, so at the moment, the timing of the change of ends. Yeah, it's two minutes. Yeah. Why not make it 90 seconds? Yes. Yeah. I mean, people go, well, that's only 30 seconds you're saving. Actually, it's not. You know, you, you take five. It's just about the little things that mm. actually speed up. And we've always traditionally changed sides because of the lighting conditions in, yeah. the, in a gym. So there's no way you can get away, get away from that. Inevitably, what they'll do is... Um, I, yeah, I don't know that they will speed up the game. I think, like I said, they'll 
spend more time and effort in entertainment and, and things that are around the package. Yeah, let's just check on that score sheet now. Well, clicking over 22-16, and here we go. Hop away from the back, the big man, as uh, Mount Monganui looked pretty good to wrap this up in straight against Burnside. Yep, who just haven't been able to fire a shot oh, today. <laughs> duck, ducked under that long way to duck, too. <laughs> they just haven't been able to fire a shot, Burnside boys, um, which is pretty unfortunate for them. But at the same time, um, they didn't have quite the best season in Christchurch this year either. So this is probably a little bit reflective of, of that this is not, not going to be their year to uh, to really struggle, uh, really to fight oh, it out with the big boys. But a good rally now. And uh, to the side. So that takes us to a match point, 24-16 after winning the first 25-20 and the second 25-23. Here we go with uh, the mount, Hopoi with the serve. Finishes it off with That's a big a great way shot. To finish. And there it is, it wraps it up. And Warren Smith, a bit of a summary from you about how Mount Monganui wrapped it up. Yeah, that was a great game from them, really tidy. Um, they didn't have to extend themselves. Um, like I said, Burnside gave them, gave them all of the ammunition they needed. Um, so I'm really interested to see how far Mount Monganui can push this. Obviously, um, with the big man down there, he's going to be causing quite a lot of havoc around the place uh, in the next couple of days. So I'm looking forward to seeing the, how, Mount, how Mount Monganui actually go this year. All right, well, a three-set win for Mount Monganui. We'll be coming back with the, well, with play starting from 8 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for day one. Summer Tournament 2024, a Māori Active, find us on YouTube. Your Hucker Fix 24 7. Download the Māori Plus app now. The important thing for me is the value of the land and the whakapapa of the land. No mai and welcome to Sydney Karemal. Takatapui Pride is on display. To celebrate 50 years of world gay pride and rising up. A lot of my career has been finding glass ceilings to break through. Queer in Here, Season 2. Ki the Māori, me Māori Plus. With a lot of Māori coming home, they all wanted to do something with their land. I had a meeting with my children. I said, right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn this block into macadamia. The important thing for me is the value of the land, the whakapapa of the land. Look after your land, and who better to look after the land than yourselves? Homeland and Sea, ki whakata Māori, me Māori Plus. Ariki Season 3, Kifakata Māori, me Māori Plus. Their tupuna had the vision. This is where we want to be. Now innovation will shape their future. Things that we need is just connecting with one another. And that's what Papakainga brings. Fano are turning their dream. It's intergenerational housing. Into reality. Within 15 years, they could be living mortgage-free. We're not just building houses, no, we're building dreams. Kainga Fenua, Kifakata Māori, me Māori Plus. Takatapui Pride, no my and welcome to Sydney Karemaz, is out to play. To celebrate 50 years of world gay pride. 
rising above. A lot of my career has been finding glass ceilings to break through, but I'm right, I'm tough. And learning through aroha. I can't imagine an equitable Aotearoa without Te Ao Māori and without the voices of Takatapu and trans people. Queer in Here, Season 2. Ki Whakata Māori, Me Māori Plus. I was about 11, and um, I probably planted my first tree. You know, I got this connection with the place. It's home. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Bailey's finding buyers that others can't. Hey, sport is about more than just the game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. It's learning when to back yourself or back your buddies. It's actually being excited to get out of bed early on a Saturday. Sport is about more than just the game. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t- kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through through tough times. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved in it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on. And so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand carbon farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forest so that we get the biodiversity benefit. 